Hello! This episode I want to talk about the future of the quantified self. The quantified self was a movement that I helped start over 20 years ago or more. And um, the idea of it in brief was that we could use technology to measure ourselves, our behavior, our health, our performance, our productivity. And that measurement would allow us to see ourselves and then because we could measure it, we could also change ourselves and change for the better. So we could improve our health, improve our performance, improve our productivity, improve our memories by using technology which was becoming cheaper and cheaper. And originally, a lot of this technology stuff was wearables. So you'd wear a Fitbit, later on an Apple Watch, and it would track your behavior, track your body, maybe it would track other things around you. And that tracking, we could use that data to make choices, to affect our behavior, to improve something. Or if it was uh, illness, to rectify and change it, to cure it. That was the general dream of the quantified self. We were going to quantify ourselves. And when we launched it, there was a great enthusiasm as people came forward and thought of thousands, tens of thousands of different ways to track. And they could track anything, almost anything you could imagine. There would be somebody tracking it, whether it was um, allergy responses, how often you sneezed and where. Maybe it was about... Um, tracking uh, uh, your um, sensitivity to uh, allergies, maybe it was tracking your glucose if you were a diabetic. 24 hours a day you could track, it, not just when you went into the doctor's office once a month or once a year, you could track it every minute. You could track your heart, you could track your exercise, you could track your mood, you could track your ability to perform mental uh, exercises and you could then perform experiments on yourself to improve those things. Athletes could track themselves and their own performance to excel. People at work could track their productivity, try to find the best time of day when they and their own personality were, were the most efficient or they were the least efficient and try to adjust their schedule to that. So there was a blossoming of many, many different ways in which um, by measuring ourselves, we could actually try to improve ourselves. And um, it became a worldwide movement. There were many, many meetups around the world. There were many hardware manufacturers who came in to try to make devices that you could carry in your pocket and eventually that you could wear that could track this. Um, and very few of them are still around. Um, there was the Fitbit still there, the Apple Watch, and there are some medical devices where you could track things continuously. But a lot of them haven't stuck around because it turned out that the it was easy to collect the data, but much more difficult to do anything meaningful with the data. In part because there wasn't um, uh, lots of things to. Uh, in, in the medical arena that could actually make a difference. And secondly, there was so much data that it was almost beyond a human. It was a full-time, excuse me, it was a full-time job for a human to just mess with and, and calculate and process. So lately the quantified self has not been as, um, as such a, uh, such a hype driven, um, movement it's gone a little slower but it's still making headway into enabling people to improve their health or their performance or their productivity or their memories and um, some of the areas in which this is happening is, is in wearables so we're still making wearables there's still a lot of hope that the smart glasses that we're going to wear for the mirror world will also because it's collecting data, it will continue to collect individual data about the wearer as well as the outside world. So we're going to um, 
continue to, 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 to accumulate that data, the ubiquitous AI that we're um, creating right now um, it has not been cheap enough to actually apply to the data that we get individually, but that will also um, continue to nibble away at the problem of having a lot of data but not really being able to make sense out of it. But the, 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 main, the main advantage that we're going to get from the quantified self is this idea of personalization. That was always sort of the real goal. The real goal was something we call the N of 1, N1, an experiment of N1. Most medical research is performed at a very large scale where you have thousands and thousands of participants and uh, it's really not considered valid unless you have that minimum number of thousands. That's because what they're trying to make is, is, is a medicine, a treatment that will work for everybody. And you need some minimum number to prove that. But in fact, none of us really want a treatment or a, a, a therapy or a regime or a practice or a habit that works for everybody. We only want something that works for us. And so instead of having you know, an N of a thousand experiment, we can have an N of one and one experiment. We're just going to experiment on ourselves. And if it works for us, then that's all we need. And so this is the idea that, that we want to personalize treatment, personalize everything just for us. And so the quantified self is still very, very valid in this idea of ultimate personalization where we're, we are trying to figure out what works for us. And um, that process is a little different than what we would normally do for a scientific study where you want to have double blind and all these other kind of qualifications and um, uh, checks and balances, we don't have that when we're doing ourselves. We have to have a different methodology, and that's where the quantified self has been making some headway, is trying to figure out how do we personalize, how do we optimize something where an experiment on ourselves. And um, Again, the, the goal is to have something where, where for instance, there's uh, the concept of a, of a personalized pill where, where I am taking medicine necessary for some ailment, say, but that the amount that I'm taking every day, that dosage, is determined by the data, by the readings, by the sensors that I've gotten in the day in the 24 hours previous. So rather than just kind of an arbitrary amount, that the, taken from a big study and some doctor thinks I should take this amount, we have, a very, we have an evidence-based dosage based on the evidence of the previous 24 hours, how, you actually, how your body actually responded to the last dosage. And so you, you, you are personalizing that, personally, meaning not just to yourself, but to yourself that day, to the person you are right this minute. And that kind of getting the data, collecting it, processing it, and then having it determine the dosage of what you take that evening, that's what we're talking about with the quantified self. That is sort of the future of personalization. And um, we can do that, and of course, not just with medicine, but with any other kind of regime, any other kind of health practice from nutrition. Again, you could be measuring how your body responds when you eat something good. Say something very, very healthy. You eat a bunch of broccoli. How does it actually affect your body? Or you eat an ice cream sundae. How does that affect it? And you can actually see it in real time and measure that effect over time. And so you have that power of observation and of knowing yourself through the measurement of the technology. And then you can adjust what your medicines are. And your medicines, of course, can be adjusted given what you're actually eating. And that can all feed into those formulas. And that's the kind of personalization that we're talking about. And, um, of course, part of that is the fact that we all have slightly different genes. Not that our difference is very, very minimal, but those differences can make a difference. And so this movement to, to sequence ourselves over time will continue, even though right now all that data 
It has not been very useful to individuals. That data has been very useful to making the science work. The, the catch-22 is we need to have a couple hundred million people's gene sequence before we know how to interpret it in terms of the, 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 the correlation between a body and a gene. So we need to have, we need to, to sequence 100 million of them to, to actually make that correlation. So the initial 100 million people aren't going to have as much benefit from the sequencing as the next 100 million. But that's the process that we're going to go right now. Some of that payoffs will, will happen soon as we have a bigger and bigger database of genetic sequencing. Because ultimately, when we're going to personalize things, whether it's your performance, your athletic, or your well-being, your genes make a difference. And sequencing them will give us a way to understand how they make a difference so that we can personalize that to you based on your environment, based on your history, and based on your genes. Um, and eventually, I think, um, uh, our genetic makeup will also be, become an ID uh, biometric, something that we're going to, um, to use as our identity. And, and we will come to know ourselves, measure ourselves to such an extent that that becomes our password, that, that we, our own bodies, our own selves become our identity, which is how we operate in real life. It would also become our digital identity, that, that, our, that all the things about us, including our heartbeat, how we walk, our gait, our voice, all these things, we're going to continue to, to measure, um, and they will become something that will be really impossible to fake because there's so many different um, vectors. And so you can fake one or two, eye print, fingerprints, but you can't fake the whole body. And so uh, that is another reason the quantify self will continue is that it becomes also for us a form of our identity. So for health, for performance, if you're trying to do something in athletic terms, for productivity, if you're trying to find how and where you best work, how you're most productive, how you learn the best, the quantify self will continue to become the way we think about these and the way we learn how to personalize all these activities. And that's where we're going with the quantified self.